day, ladies. It's me again, your menopause tailor, helping you make sense of all things related to menopause. I'm so glad you're joining to me, me today. This tutorial is going to put some things into perspective for you. You know, there are just so many things that most women have all wrong, and this video will correct a couple of them. I'll be discussing the effect of estrogen on both uterine cancer and breast cancer. So in my book, this material is in the separate chapters on breast cancer and uterine cancer. And the same is true of the outline notes. So it's chapters 30 and 31 in the book and Roman numerals 12 and 13 in the outline notes. You won't find this information laid out in those materials the same way I discuss it today. I'm comparing and contrasting two things that are addressed separately in the book and outline notes. You see, that's the beauty of these videos and especially the beauty of my seminar. In both, I can really present material in different ways that enable you to see the whole picture. So this is video 102, and the title of this video is, Which Cancer is Caused by Estrogen? Uterine or Breast? Do you already know the answer to the question this title poses? Ah, you may think you do, when in fact, you don't. And if you do know the answer, do you know why? Well, after watching this video, you will. So let's start with the key word, cause. Cause, you know, people misuse that word all the time. We're not talking about an association or a link, or any relationship, then cause. Cause implies that it begins the process of turning a normal cell into a cancer cell. You see, every single cancer begins as one single cell that goes crazy and grows out of control. And we want to know if estrogen begins that process for either of these two cancers. Did you know that we actually have a series of tests that an agent of cause must pass before deciding that it does indeed cause cancer? Yep. Bet you didn't know that. So we're going to put estrogen to the test in determining if it causes uterine cancer, breast cancer, both or neither. There are actually six separate tests that estrogen has to pass to be the cause of either cancer. So first, I'll tell you what those six tests are. The first test is the consistency test. The consistency test says if estrogen causes the cancer, then there should be consistency of the relationship between estrogen and the cancer from one study to the next. If there is consistency from one study to the next, then estrogen just might be the cause of that cancer. If there is no consistency, then estrogen fails the consistency test, and it's doubtful that it's the cause. The second test is the dose relationship test. This test says that if estrogen causes the cancer, then there should be a dose-related effect. Higher dosages of estrogen should be associated with higher rates of the cancer. And lower dosages of estrogen 
should be associated with lower rates of the cancer. Makes sense, doesn't it? It wouldn't make sense if higher dosages were associated with lower rates of cancer. The third test is the estrogen alone versus estrogen plus progesterone test. Since we're only addressing estrogen as the causative agent, this test serves to isolate it. This test says that if estrogen causes the cancer, then there should be a higher incidence of cancer in women who take estrogen alone than in those who take both estrogen and progesterone. And since estrogen and progesterone are both present in your body, we need to know the difference in cancer rates when you take estrogen all by itself versus when you take estrogen plus progesterone. It wouldn't make sense to say that estrogen causes a cancer if women who take estrogen all by itself have lower rates of cancer than those who take estrogen plus progesterone. The fourth test is the persistence test. You see, cancer is all about a cell that goes completely crazy and won't stop growing. Once it gets started, it just keeps on growing. The agent that caused it to go crazy in the first place doesn't have to hang around for the cancer to keep spreading. All the causative agent has to do is start the process. After that, the cancer grows on its own. So the persistence test says that if estrogen causes the cancer, the increased risk should remain even after you stop taking estrogen. I mean, the estrogen would have already done the job of getting the cancer started. So if stopping the estrogen changes your risk or the incidence of the cancer, then it wasn't the cause. It might have helped it grow in some way, but it didn't initiate the process. If only current users of estrogen have an increased risk, but past users of estrogen don't, you have to scratch your head and wonder how the cancer disappears if you stop taking estrogen. The fifth test is the type of cancer test. If estrogen causes the cancer, then the type of cancer that develops in the presence of estrogen should be more advanced, more aggressive, less responsive to treatment, and more fatal. If estrogen causes the cancer, it just wouldn't be logical if the type of cancer that developed in the presence of estrogen were less advanced, less aggressive, more responsive to treatment, or less fatal. And the sixth test of cause is the timing test. This test says that if estrogen causes the cancer, then the size of the cancer should correlate with the timing of estrogen therapy. If you took estrogen a long time ago and it started the cancer in the first place, the tumor size should be large. On the other hand, if you took estrogen recently and it started the cancer, the tumor size should be small. Every cancer begins as just one single cell and it takes time for that single cell to reproduce enough to grow into a tumor that you can di diagnose as cancer. So no matter how quickly or how slowly a cancer grows, there is no such thing as a cancer that starts and becomes large enough to diagnose overnight. Every time a cancer is diagnosed, it has been there for quite some time. When women say, I started taking estrogen and two months later it had already caused cancer, they are greatly mistaken. So there you have them, the six tests that an agent has to pass to be the cause of cancer. 
So to recap, we have the consistency test, the dose relationship test, the estrogen alone versus estrogen plus progesterone test, the persistence test, the type of cancer test, and the timing test. So let's see how estrogen fares as a cause for uterine cancer and breast cancer according to these six tests. Here, I have a scorecard for these two diseases and the six tests of cause. And we're gonna use the scorecard to decide whether estrogen causes each of these cancers. So we'll start with the first one, the consistency test. You already know that estrogen causes uterine cancer, right? I've taught you that in a bunch of these tutorials. And it turns out that all the studies on the causative effect of estrogen on your uterus are consistent. They all agree that estrogen causes uterine cancer. Why? Because estrogen thickens the lining of your uterus. And since menopause, is when you stop having periods to shed that thick lining, it turns into uterine cancer if it stays thick, all because of estrogen. That's precisely why you have to take progesterone with estrogen if you still have your uterus. But what about breast cancer? Does estrogen pass the consistency test for breast cancer? No, there is no consistency of the relationship between estrogen and breast cancer from one study to another. For every study concluding that estrogen causes breast cancer, there's another one concluding that it doesn't. So, estrogen passes the consistency test as a cause for uterine cancer but it fails as a cause for breast cancer. Okay, the dose relationship test is next. Let's talk about uterine cancer first. There is an absolute dose related effect between estrogen and uterine cancer. The higher the dosage of estrogen, the greater the incidence of uterine cancer. Ooh, but that's not true with breast cancer. With breast cancer, there is no dose-related effect between estrogen and breast cancer. Higher dosages of estrogen are not associated with higher rates of breast cancer. So, estrogen passes the dose relationship test for uterine cancer, but it fails as a cause for breast cancer. All right, what about the next test? The third test is the estrogen alone versus the estrogen plus progesterone test. Now, you should already know that estrogen passes this test for uterine cancer. Estrogen alone causes uterine cancer. Estrogen plus progesterone prevents uterine cancer. Women who take estrogen alone get uterine cancer, but those who take estrogen plus progesterone don't. Again, that's precisely why you have to take progesterone with your estrogen if you still have your uterus. Please tell me that you've learned this already. But what about breast cancer? Is the same true for breast cancer? Once again, the answer is no. In fact, with breast cancer, the opposite is true. Breast cancer is less common in women who take estrogen alone. It's more common in women who take both estrogen and progesterone. So, estrogen pass 
discusses the estrogen alone versus estrogen plus progesterone test as a cause for uterine cancer, but it fails as a cause for breast cancer. Well, look at that. So far, estrogen is way behind in qualifying as a cause for breast cancer. Let's move on to the next test. The next one is the persistence test. Do you think the risk for uterine cancer persists after you discontinue estrogen? You bet it does. The increased risk for uterine cancer persists long after you discontinue estrogen. Not only that, longer duration of estrogen use results in a higher incidence of uterine cancer. Furthermore, the risk for uterine cancer lasts for at least five years after discontinuing estrogen. What about breast cancer? Well, it's completely different. The risk of breast cancer does not persist after discontinuing estrogen. Only current users have an increased risk. The risk disappears once you discontinue estrogen. That just doesn't make sense in terms of how cancer begins. So, estrogen passes the persistence test as a cause for uterine cancer, but it fails as a cause for breast cancer. Okay, how about the type of cancer that develops in the presence of estrogen for these two cancers. Is it a better type of cancer or a worse type of cancer? The type of uterine cancer that develops in the presence of estrogen is more advanced, more aggressive, less responsive to treatment, and more fatal which is exactly what you'd expect if estrogen causes it in the first place. But once again, the same is not true for breast cancer. The type of breast cancer that develops in the presence of estrogen is less advanced, less aggressive, more responsive to treatment, and less fatal. So, estrogen passes the type of cancer test as a cause for uterine cancer, but it fails as a cause for breast cancer. Are you shocked so far? Is this the opposite of what you expected for breast cancer? If so, join the club. I've yet to meet a single woman who has her so-called facts straight on this. So finally, we're at the sixth and final test. This is the timing test. This one has to do with correlating when you took estrogen and when the cancer began. So you have to know a little bit about how fast each cancer grows. And sometimes it can be difficult to know how fast a cancer grows. Fortunately, we know a lot about the rate of growth of uterine and breast cancer, so we can calculate how long it's been since they started. And uterine cancer begins when estrogen thickens your uterine lining and it doesn't shed. This is very well established. There's no question that estrogen is the culprit in starting uterine cancer. But with breast cancer, it's different. Breast cancer grows very slowly. Guess how long it takes for most breast cancers to grow from a single cell to the size of a small grape? Do you want to venture a guess? What if I give you some options? Do you think it's seven days, 
seven weeks, seven months, or seven years? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> I'll tell you. It's seven years. That means you would have to have taken estrogen seven years before you discovered the breast cancer. That can be a bit tricky. Like I said, when a woman says, I started taking estrogen and right away I had breast cancer, and she blames estrogen for causing it, she's way off on the timing. So that means that estrogen passes the timing test as a cause for uterine cancer, but it fails as a cause for breast cancer. Wow! Estrogen is the winner as a cause for uterine cancer, but it's a big loser as a cause for breast cancer. Are you freaking out a bit? I know, I know. You see, you've had this all wrong because we live in a world of sound bites and most of what you hear is grossly inaccurate. So I want you to give this some thought. You know, none of this is new information. It's just that it's been grossly distorted and the distortion has scared you to death. I don't want you to be scared. I want you to have facts and I want you to know that with facts you can make sense of things. So you know that my goal is to give you facts and I hope you can see how this makes sense. I guarantee you that if you watch my videos in order, everything will always make perfect sense. Now, if you're jumping around and watching videos anytime, or if you're jumping into the series, right, series in the middle, you will have missed some things. I build this block by block with each video. So the foundation was set way back in video one, <laughs> and it's built since there. So if you don't understand something, it's because you've missed a video. I have absolutely nothing to gain by telling you anything but the truth. So there you have it. Estrogen is an obvious cause of uterine cancer, but estrogen is not the obvious cause of breast cancer. And that's where we'll stop today. I think you've had enough of a shakeup for one day. <laughs> I'll see you again in a week. In the meantime, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And don't forget to subscribe. Just click subscribe and you'll get an email with the video in it every week. <laughs> Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.